Welcome everyone to our brand new course, the Blender Creator Course, Stylized 3D Models. And what's more, we'll be using the brand new Blender 4 to create this amazing looking model. So you can see down here on the right hand side, I do have the Blender 4 beta version. And by the time you probably grab this course, we'll be well into Blender 4 and beyond. So the first thing we're gonna do is just go through everything that you're gonna need throughout the course. And as far as Blender versions go, anything pretty much above Blender 2.8 will be fine to use. But I do recommend anything above Blender 3. And the reason for that is because we have things um, like the Asset Manager, which came in in Blender 3 or 3.1. And that's something we're going to be using a lot to speed up our workflow. So it's important that you get the workflow right from the start. And if you get this actual workflow working you're going to be very very fast at creating models and environments so basically just make sure that you've got a blender version that is up to date as possible and first of all what we're going to do is we're going to go up to edit go down to preferences and what we're going to do is we're going to come to the interface and then we're going to go down and where it says status bar we want to open that up now at the moment we'll have on blender version ticked on just tick on uh, scene statistics and then down at the bottom right hand side here, you'll see that what the object is in the scene. Now we wanna do a little bit more than that. I would say that tick on system memory and video memory is also important because then it gives you an idea of how much actual memory you're using within Blender. And this is important if you're having a lot of crashes, you can see where the issues are. All right, so once we do that, I recommend that we go back to system now. And what we do is we increase these undo steps. Now, the more you increase these undo steps, the uh, the more memory it's going to use for your system but i recommend putting this on 100 or something like that and the reason is is because then if you make a mistake you can go back pretty far 32 i find is a little bit too small next of all then what we're going to do is just press enter on that and then i'm going to close this down just for now now you'll see in my viewport that my blender is pretty much the startup and the reason i've got that is because i go down to file i'm going to go to defaults and i'm going to load factory settings so this is how blender comes in so everything i will be using within blender is pretty much available at the startup and anything else i'm going to be using is either in the download pack or it will be under the preferences in other words built into blender so you won't need anything else any other resources except what we're going to be using now there will be things that I will be showing you which will use other outs, um, resources outside of the, this Blender file and the download file but you'll be able to then decide whether you want to um, use those to create concept art and things like that. Alright then finally then let's save out our work. So the thing is you want to go to file, you want to go down to save as and then what you want to do is you just want to save it somewhere. So I'm just going to call it stylized 3D model course like so and then i'm going to press enter enter again and then it's going to save it out now you will notice that if for instance i uh, move this uh, cube so if i just move this cube and drop it back you'll notice up here at the left hand side we've actually got um, a little star and that just means that we've not actually saved this out now the other thing you'll see now is that i've actually switched on my uh, keystroke so you'll be able to see exactly what keys i'm going to be um pressing so which is going to make it easy in case you miss something or you can't understand my accent so now all i'm going to do is i'm just going to go up to file i'm going to go down to save because we don't actually need to um save as anymore we just click save now because it's already been saved as and that means then you'll just be able to save your workout i would save your workout after every single lesson even if i forget try and get in the habit of saving it out because if not it's going it's going to be a bit of a mess if you you know you've gone so far and you didn't save out your work. There are ways to um, get work back, which I'll discuss um, a bit later on in the course. But for now, just make sure you're saving it out. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do before we do anything, it's important to get through the actual introduction to moving around the Blender workspace. So if you're new to Blender and you've never used it before, I recommend that you watch this. For all of those who already know how to move around the Blender viewport. Uh, go on to lesson two where we'll carry on from there all right everyone so i hope you enjoyed that you're gonna learn a ton of stuff and i'll see you on the next one hello everyone and welcome to the basics of blender part of the course i recommend grabbing a pen and paper or a word document and join down these keyboard shortcuts here we'll be going through the very basics of blender and the keyboard shortcuts you will need 
So with all that said, let's get started. So on the left hand side, you'll see I have key casting on. This will show you the keys I'm pressing in real time and this will be on pretty much, if not all of the entire course. The next thing I'd like to show you is any new keys we use, there will be a small animation that will appear down at the bottom right hand corner. This will only appear the first time we use that particular new key and I think it really helps keep the flow of the lessons to a decent rate, both for beginners and those more familiar with Blender. Because they only appear once, they won't clutter up the screen and there's always screen casting to rely on. Also down the bottom right hand side, you'll see a detailed animation of anything that needs more context. This is useful if you're new to 3D modeling in particular, because there's a lot of jargon and technical terms that need a decent explanation or more context of why we are doing something. I recommend then if you need more information, jumping onto the Blender website and checking out their detailed explanations of pretty much anything Blender related. So now when we mention Blender viewport, this is actually a viewport you can see it. All of this gray area here is actually a viewport. Now if we go to the UV editing bar up here, you'll see that over the left hand side it's now in two screens. And if I say the UV editing viewport, all that means is just this gray box over here. So now let's go back to modeling and let's go a little bit further into how to move around in actual Blender. So the first thing I will discuss is that the middle mouse button, actually if you hold it down, you can rotate anywhere within the Blender viewport. And then if you want to zoom, it's just scrolling in and scrolling back. Now you can also press Control Shift and the middle mouse, hold it down and then just push it forward or push it back and you can scroll in very, very slowly. Now to pan, all you need to do is you need to hold shift button and the middle mouse and then you can pan from left to right. And to zoom to the object, which is very handy, let's say you're really far out and you really need to zoom to it, all you need to do is press the dot on the actual number pad and that will zoom you right in to the object um, you want to zoom to. So for instance, if I'm zoomed out and I want to zoom to my uh, light, for instance, it's very easy then to come across the scene collection, click on your light, Press the dot on the uh, number pad and that will zoom you right in. Now the next thing we need to discuss is just deleting objects. So to click on an object is just left click and then what you can press is you can press the delete key and that will just delete it out of the way. So I've just deleted my light there and now I'm going to come across to my camera and actually delete that out of the way as well. So the next thing I want to discuss is if we click on this cube and we press shift D what you'll notice if you move the mouse now, it's actually going to make a duplication of my actual cube. If I don't actually click anything on my mouse and I just click the right click button, it will drop that back in place. Now you can't see there's actually two cubes here at the moment, but there actually is. So we need to bring in a gizmo and the gizmo is basically something that we can move things left and right, up and down, things like that. So if I press shift space bar, come down and you'll see we've got one that says move. And now we actually have our gizmo. And if I pull this to the right hand side, you can see now we can pull this away and now we're able to move this around. You can also freely move this as well. If you press the G key, you'll notice if you've got it selected now, you can move it basically anywhere around the viewport. You can drop it back with a right click or you can put it wherever you want it. So G and then you click left click and it will put it wherever I wanted it. Now also why the dot button, the zoom to button is important is if I press the dot button now, you will see that if I just zoom out and hold the middle mouse and rotate around, you'll see that I actually rotate around the origin of this actual um, cube. Now if I click on the other cube and I press the dot button, you can see now that I'm actually rotating around the origin of this cube. Now the next thing we want to discuss is object mode and edit mode. At the moment we are in object mode. We can't really do a lot with this cube except move it around. Now if I press the tab button, we will then go into edit mode. And in edit mode, we can actually do a lot more things with this cube. So up on the top left hand side here, you will see that we've got three different icons. One of them, this one here is vertices. The next one across is edges. And the next one across is face. Now if we're on vertices and we come over to this vertice for instance, I then, if I press shift spacebar to bring in my gizmo again, I then can move this around. Now if I come into edge select, I can grab the whole edge and move this around like so. Finally, if I come into face select, I can now grab a whole face and move it around like so. 
Now, the other thing is, if we come to our vertex select, I can select a vertex. You can also select another vertex or another object or something else like that just by holding the shift button and actually clicking on the other vertex or the other object. Or if we come to face select, for instance, we can grab this face, shift select the second face. And this is how we can select multiple objects. Now, the next thing we need to discuss is the axis. So we can see here we have a red axis and a green axis. Now, just to show you what this actually relates to, if we come up on the top um, right hand side here where you've got these two interlocking balls and you click this little down arrow, you will see that we can turn on the Z axis. Now, we're just going to turn this on just to show you what I mean. So if I turn that on now, you'll see another axis appears here. Now, the green axis is representation of the Y. So if I want to scale this out on the Y, all I would have to press is S and Y. And now you can see I can scale it out along the axis. Now, if I want to scale it out on the X, so that's the red axis, I'd press S and X and I can scale it out along the axis. And again, the same thing. So S and Z, the up and down axis is Z and it's S and Z and then you can scale it up and down. Finally, as well, this is also important if we actually want to rotate it because we'll rotate it on an actual axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the whole of this by pressing the A button and then I'm going to rotate it around. So I want to rotate it on the Y axis, so it's R, Y, and then you can see it will only rotate on the Y axis and no matter where I put my mouse, it will always rotate on that axis. To click it back to where it was, just again, the right click, and if you want to turn it, all you need to press is R and Y again, and then let's give it a degrees. So what we're going to do is we're going to press 90 on the actual number pad, so 90, enter button, and now you'll see it's rotated by 90 degrees. So just to summarize that, S is scale and R is rotate. Normally when we scale something or we rotate something, it's followed by the actual axis and then it's followed by a number, specifically when we rotate something. Normally when we scale something, we just hit um, scale, pull the mouse out and we'll scale it up. When we rotate something, it's normally R followed by the axis, followed by a number on the number pad. So now the last thing I want to discuss is if we go to object mode now, we need a way to actually view this a little bit easier than the way it is at the moment. Let's first of all turn off the Z axis. And what we'll do now is we'll use the number pad to actually view this. So if I press one on the number pad, that will go actually into the front view of our viewport. If I press three on the number pad, that will go into the side view. And if I press seven on the number pad, that will go into the top view of our viewport. Now the opposite, to get to the opposite, all you need to do is you need to hold control. So in this occasion, we'll press control and seven, and that will bring us to the bottom of this object in the viewport. Control one is the rear of the object, and control three is the opposite side of the object. So now before we finish this section of the course, I need to show you something that's also very important. So if we come up to the top left hand side, you'll see you've got a button here that says edit. And if we come down to preferences, one thing that you should always do that when you first download a blender, you should always put on the status bar, which is this button here. And if I click all of these on, you will see now, if I click them all on and I close that down, down at the bottom right hand side here, you have all the details that you need. So for instance, we've got how many faces and how many triangles are actually in the scene, how many objects are in the scene, and the memory and VRAM that's actually taken up. This is really important if you want to get a good idea of how much power your computer is actually using and how many polygons and triangles are in the scene. Polygons and triangles you'll learn more about as we progress through the course. And that pretty much covers the basic of Blender and I hope you all found that both helpful and informative but more importantly easy to understand. So now as they say, on with the show.